Good evening and Merry Christmas. We want to welcome you to the final night of the LFC uh, combined orchestra and choir and tech team and uh, just wonderful musicians here presenting to you as our gift to not only our church but the community. The light has come, our Christmas musical. We again are so glad you're here. If you're a guest with us this morning, this evening, we want to welcome you. We're glad that you're here. If you need anything during your time here, you can slip out into the lobby area. There'll be an usher that will point you in the direction. If you need restrooms, they're straight down the back hall. And again, anything else, please ask. We want you to feel at home, and we want you to feel uh, like you're part of the family tonight. A couple of things before we get started that we want to just remind you of. First of all, if you take a moment and take your cell phone out and make sure that that's silenced or turned off if you can, we'd appreciate that very much. Um, also, we want to invite you, if you are a guest this evening, uh, before you leave to step by the Welcome Center in the lobby. Uh, we have folks that will be there at that big Welcome Center, and we have a gift that we would like to give you. No strings attached. We just want to say thank you and show our appreciation for you being here tonight. So before you leave, if you would, again, stop by the Welcome Center and get that gift. And again, uh, may God bless you and may you be blessed by this concert. May we be reminded of the hope that we have this season because the light has come indeed, and that light's name is Jesus. Let's pray, and then I'll turn it over to this wonderful group behind me to be blessed and to be a blessing tonight. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather on this night. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to remember that because you came, Jesus, we have hope. Because you, Jesus, the light of the world has come, uh, Lord, we have not only hope, but we have salvation. And we pray that tonight would certainly be a blessing. Lord, we pray that it would be entertaining. Lord, we pray that our spirits would be uplifted. But more than that, we pray and, and ask that you would shed light on the truth, Jesus, that you are our Savior and our Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you. We dedicate this evening to your glory. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the beginning, before anything existed, before time itself, Genesis tells us that the beginning was before the creation of the world we know, was the word. God spoke and the world was created. The book of Hebrews tells it, us that through the sun, God created the world and that the sun is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature that the sun upholds the universe by the word of his power. That same sun, the Gospel of John tells us, took on flesh and dwelt among us, and in the book of Revelation is called the word of God. And the word was with God. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He was with God before the creation of the world and is sitting with him even now. And the word was God. Jesus said, the Father and I are one, and he who has seen me has seen the Father. In Philippians, we read that Jesus is very nature God. He was with God in the beginning. In Hebrews, we read that the Son, the Father said, you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In Colossians, we read that by him, Jesus, all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. He reconciles all things to himself, having made peace. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall have life. He also said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus also said, I have come as light into the world that everyone who believes in me may not remain in darkness. The Bible tells us that God delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. In the beginning.
Noel, Noel. The word we know as Noel is derived from the old French, Neal Noel, which is commonly interpreted as Christ's birthday, or more simply, Christmas. Its roots go even deeper, coming from the Latin word natalis, which means birthday. It also has roots in the word nouvelle, which means news, but its most predominant usage focused on the concept of the announcement of a birth. Since the 1400s, we have seen the term appear in Christmas songs of many nationalities, often followed by a lyrical discourse on how this birth impacts all mankind. These songs happily declare the truth, as they should, that Jesus was born to save. As it is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. If there is a reason to rejoice, it is with this Noel, Messiah is born.
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of name, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, 
or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the great mystery of Christmas, that our eternal God would take on mortal flesh, that the invisible would become visible, the sinless one would come to bear the sins of the world he created and we corrupted. The nation of Israel was looking for the Messiah, waiting patiently as the God who had chosen them rescued them from bondage, gave them their land, and forgave them time and time again as they wandered away from him, now went silent. He remained silent for 400 long years as the nation looked to his promises to send the Messiah. But they were looking for a king to come in power and majesty, not to be humbly born in a lonely manger. But as God tells us many times in his word, don't let outward appearances fool you. That infant would grow up one day and fulfill every prophecy, bringing salvation to the world he created. Behold, our great creator has come. Behold our great creator makes himself a house of clay. A robe of mortal flesh he takes and we behold his face. Our cow the wise eternal word sounds forth in an infant's cry. In form of man is our great Lord as God in a cradle lies. i 
magnificent star appeared in the east, foretelling the birth of this humble king, declaring to all who would see that the Messiah had been born. And it did attract those seeking for truth as they wandered far to meet this newborn, traveling with anticipation and joy, bearing gifts to a child that befit a king. It is with this same attitude we should come to the manger scene today, in worship to our Lord, bringing him the sacrifice of praise that comes from our lips and our lives, recognizing that he came to save the world, to save us. This is good news indeed, something for all the world to hear. With a voice of thanksgiving, every creature on the earth, from the mountains into the valleys, tell of his glorious birth. Thank <laughs> you. 
When Jesus entered Jerusalem and was greeted with shouts from the multitudes, some of the Pharisees asked him to rebuke those shouting praises to him. Jesus' reply was interesting. Instead of complying, he warned the Pharisees that if the people stopped shouting, the rocks would cry out with praise to him. That which he created knew him and would praise him. He was worthy of such praise and would receive it. Creation itself witnessed his incarnation and watched as his plan of redemption unfolded. It even participated, lending the brilliant light of a star that first Christmas and then darkness over Golgotha. Imagine the wonder of the angels who announced his birth and witnessed his march to the cross and then his glorious resurrection. Their declaration of glory to God rings throughout time from that night in Bethlehem and for all eternity.
Awesome job. Can you believe that all of those months of work and months of practice are coming to an end? Can you believe it? Well, I want to tell you, choir and orchestra and tech people, uh, all of your effort and all of that hard work, though it is coming to an end tonight, has not been for naught. What a blessing and what, what an incredible gift to us and what an incredible gift to our Savior. Can you believe that after all of the weeks of your preparation, that Christmas is next Sunday. This time next week, we're all going to be in a Christmas hangover. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it came and is finished this quickly. Isn't that something about the holiday season, about Christmas time? We put so much preparation into it. We have a lot of hope placed into it. We want so much out of Christmas, and it comes and then it's gone. It really makes us ask the question, what is the hope of Christmas? What is it that we really hold on to? Because in a week, it's all over. When we are children, our hope is put in the gifts of Christmas. When I was a little guy, probably second or third grade, the one thing that I wanted more than anything else for Christmas was a set of wrist racers. Do any of you my age, 43, remember wrist racers? Anyone? Yes. Wrist racers were basically, looked like big watches that you would put on your wrist, but inside the little top that you would remove was a little tiny wind-up car. You would pull out the ramp, you would wind up the car, and zoom, off of your wrist the little car would race and go. I wanted more than anything a Dukes of Hazard set of wrist racers. <laughs> and I had a very cool aunt that on Christmas Eve, I opened her gift, and there was a set of wrist racers. And my Christmas was made. But guess what happened just about two or three months later? The General Lee stopped working. <laughs> and pretty soon, my wrist racers, that thing that I had put all of my hope in Christmas in, was no more. I really didn't get over that even up in college. When I was in college, I wanted a Super Nintendo. Any of you remember Super Nintendo? My wife, who was my girlfriend at that time, bought me a Super Nintendo and got it for Christmas. It was a great gift. But you know what happened to that gift? By about my junior year, I couldn't shove the cartridges in hard enough for the game to come up. And by my senior year, I was trying to pawn the thing for gas money. <laughs> we learned real quickly that the hope of Christmas isn't wrapped up in the gifts. You know, we begin to mature and we think, oh, we're looking for something at Christmas. What's the hope of Christmas? And maybe it's family. Well, some of you are getting ready to spend time with family, and it's not going to bring hope, is it? It's going to bring indigestion. The hope of Christmas is not wrapped up in family. I thought that for a while until the year after Dana and I moved from home and moved halfway across the country to Louisville, Kentucky, and my dad died in October. And I'll never forget going back for that first Christmas after dad was gone. The rest of the family was there, but guess what? It just wasn't the same. Some of that magic and joy of Christmas had kind of gone with him. And I remember thinking at that time, you know, the hope of Christmas is certainly not wrapped up in family. For some of you, you may be searching for the hope of Christmas, and maybe it's in the spectacle of Christ Christmas, the, the good feelings that Christmas brings. And certainly there is a lot of good feelings with Christmas, isn't there? For some of you, it's the Christmas music. For some of us, we've been listening to Christmas music since November 1st. Some of us are not going to know what to do once Christmas music goes off the radio. And certainly, the spectacle and the feeling of Christmas will go out with the change of the station back to pop or the removal of the Christmas station from XM radio. A matter of fact, in just about a week, some of you will start taking the lights down. And the big question is, after all of this investment and seeking and looking and hoping in Christmas, what do we have to hold on to 
once the lights are gone, once you don't have choir practice to go to, once we don't have Christmas music to listen to in the car, once you are reminded again after having gathered with family that your family is crazy and it wasn't all that enjoyable anyway, <laughs> where are you going to find, what are you going to hold on to, what is the hope of Christmas? And the hope of Christmas is a simple, simple hope. And it goes back to that beautiful picture we're familiar with of the manger scene and that spectacular star that stopped atop of a manger. And underneath that star in the radiant light is a baby in a manger. And we're reminded that in our search for hope and meaning, in the search for something to hold on to in this Christmas story and everything that is involved in this season, we are reminded that it all boils down to this. We can strip away the lights and the music, the toys, the gifts. You can take away the joy of family and you can take away the festivity of the season and we are left with Jesus. The hope of Christmas is found in the person of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage some of you who are seeking and searching because we all as human beings are searching for, for a connection with God. We're all searching for something bigger than ourselves. We're all asking the question, where is hope? We're all asking the big questions about eternity. We're all asking the question of this life, isn't there something more? And we invite you to discover that the more, the hope, the truth is found in the person of Jesus. And that this Jesus who came as a baby lived a perfect life. The Bible says that Jesus was sinless because Jesus is God. And he lived a perfect life so that he could become the perfect sacrifice and payment for our sin. See, the Bible says that every single human being is born sinful. We all are separated from God. That's our default mode. If we've sinned one time or if we sin many, many times like I have, it doesn't matter. The Bible says we have all fallen short of God's glorious standard. And because we've fallen short of God's glorious standard, we have no hope that we can spend eternity with him. We can have no hope that we can ultimately find him and know him and have purpose in life. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of our sin is death. The Bible says we're dead in our trespasses and sin. We are without hope. But the great news is this, that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, and Jesus came, he died on the cross. The Bible says he became sin for us. And on the cross, don't miss this, Jesus took on himself my sin and your sin. He took on the sin of every person who would trust in him. And on the cross, he took your punishment and my punishment. And not only did he defeat the power of sin when he died on the cross, but on the third day, the Bible says Jesus was raised from the dead and he defeated the power of death. And the gift that he offers you tonight is the gift of eternal life, the promise of heaven. It's the gift of forgiveness of sin. It's the gift of salvation. It's the promise that he'll never leave you or forsake you in this life or in eternity. And we look for this gift and we search for this gift and we may try to be good enough and religious enough. You may try to be moral enough. But can I tell you how you receive this gift from Jesus? It's not by changing yourself. It's not by reforming yourself or becoming better or becoming religious. It's none of that. The way you receive that gift is placing your faith and your trust in Jesus. Repenting from your sin. It's when you stop trying to make things better and fix yourself and you surrender to Christ and say, Jesus, I can't do it. I invite you to change me from the inside out. 
It's called accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that is the true gift of Christmas. So as I close my part, I would just encourage you, if you are seeking and looking and trying to find hope and trying to figure out what is this good news, why do we sing about Jesus coming, where is the hope in all of this? Can I tell you, the hope is found in Jesus. He loves you. He came to this earth for you. He died for you. And he wants a relationship with you. And he is inviting you to follow him, to commit yourself to him today. We're going to close in a moment with a beautiful worship song. And really, it's going to be our response to the great truth that Jesus came. But I would invite you, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never entered into a relationship with him, would you even take the time of singing to cry out, to call out to God, to turn to him, receive the free gift of salvation? Would you trust him tonight? At the end of this service, when it's all over, there's going to be myself and some other pastors and folks right back there in the overflow seating, right in the back, your back left, my back right. And as everyone is leaving and you're heading downstairs for refreshments and visiting, we would invite you, if you would like to speak with someone about how to have a relationship with Christ, we will be there, and we'd love to spend as much time this evening visiting with you. You just come up and say, hey, I'd like to talk, and we'll sit and visit all night if you would like. The hope of this season is found in the person of Jesus. Do you know him tonight? Heavenly Father, we pray and we ask that there would not be a person that leaves here without knowing the real hope, the real message, the truth of this season, that Jesus, you came for us, that you love us, you died for us, and you offer us salvation, forgiveness, hope, and purpose in life. Lord, may we find that in you, Jesus, and you alone. And it is in the precious and the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. We have enjoyed working on this music. We've had a lot of fun with it. We have enjoyed performing it for you and performing it for our God. But we can't finish that way because we need to respond to the truth, and, and we need your help. Now, I know some of you, and some of you have brilliantly great voices and should be up there singing. And I know some of you, and, well, that's just not the case. <laughs> but here's what I want. Whether you're a great singer or not a great singer, I want you to sing and to worship with us as we give a response back to our God who came to this earth as he did to rescue and redeem us. The song was written a year ago. So I know that the majority of you have no clue what the song sounds like. Some of you might. Chris Tomlin is one of the writers, and it seems everything Chris Tomlin does somehow makes it on its way to the radio. Um, but the song is called A King Like This, and it's a very simple melody, and the chorus you're going to hear over and over again and I know you're going to get it, but here's the deal we're going to make. I want you to lift the words up in worship, and if you don't get the melody right, I don't care, so you don't care. Let's just lift it together. So join us as we sing.
Wow, wow, wow. Awesome job. Well, again, thank you for being here tonight. If you're a guest, we are just so honored that you're here. In a moment, when we close with the word of prayer, we want to invite all of you downstairs to the gymnasium. We have a uh, spread of refreshments there. We want you to come just enjoy some fellowship and some good food. I want to thank Donna DeSarno and her crew for getting that together. Uh, so once we finish here, consider the food blessed because I will pray. Just go down and enjoy yourselves and enjoy some goodies. And, and again, if you're a guest with us, thank you for being here. If you are a guest, please stop by the Welcome Center before you go. We'd like to give you a gift. And as I said before, if you'd like to talk about anything concerning Jesus, the message of Christmas, hope, and salvation, there'll be several of us back there in the overflow room. You just come by, and we would love to visit. One note that I want to make sure I mention before uh, we do anything else, when you leave tonight, please remember we had a nice warm day, and a lot of that snow melted, and it's getting kind of cold outside and there's no way to bring a salt truck with all of the cars out there. So please be careful when you're out in the parking lot. It might be a little slick. Um, look around if there's somebody that you can help walk out there. Give them an extra hand to hold or a shoulder to hold as they go. Please uh, be aware of that. Take care of each other and uh, watch out for each other as you go home. I'd just like to say one last time before we're dismissed, a humongous thank you to this incredible group behind me and this incredible group behind you in the sound booth. And uh, can we thank them one more time? And then last but not least, I'd like to say a special word of thanks to the, the guy that made this all happen. Um, a year ago was our last cantata. Uh, for those of you who are church members, with our uh, pastor of worship, Nick Bailey, and he's moved on, and I think, I think today he was directing a cantata in North Carolina, which is exciting. But last year, we had a fella playing the piano for us, and uh, we uh, are blessed to have the fella who was playing the piano last year accompanying our musical now leading us not only the entire cantata but leading us in worship here and i just wanted us to give a great big round of thanks and applause to the man behind the curtain greg gaffney Awesome job. Well, it has been good. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We hope you have a great last week of Advent as you prepare your heart for the celebration of uh, Christmas, the birth of our Savior. If you don't have a church that you attend, uh, we would love to have you at either of our Christmas Eve services at 7 o'clock for the family. We invite kids to come dressed up as their fi favorite manger scene character at 7 o'clock. And then we have a more traditional service at 9. And some of you adults can dress up as your favorite manger characters too, I guess. Uh, that would be fine as well. But we invite you at 9 o'clock for that. And then on Christmas morning, we'll be having one combined service at 9.30. And we would love to have you come if you don't have a church home. If you have a church home, go praise the Lord there, plug in, and serve him well. And uh, we, look forward to, uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully again next year. Can I pray for us? We'll be dismissed. You're invited to head downstairs and go to the gym and enjoy a time of fellowship. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for the hope and the truth, the message of Christmas, that light has come, hope has come, salvation has come. And that is you, Jesus. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor tonight. Lord, we pray for those who are seeking that they might find ultimately what they're looking for in you, Lord, tonight. Father, we thank you for everyone who's made this possible, Lord. We thank you for those who've prepared all the goodies downstairs. We pray your blessing on our time of fellowship, on the, the food that is downstairs. Uh, Lord, may the fellowship that we have nourish our souls. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and Lord, we uh, give you all praise and all honor and all glory because you are worthy of it all. And it is in the precious and the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we pray. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.